Good morning. And welcome to all, both here in person and those who are joining us online as we gather on the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. The season of Epiphany speaks of the many ways in which God appears among us through the spirit of Christ. Speaking of which, this happened for us, for this congregation, this church, just yesterday. Let me kind of set the stage for you. Um, usually the choir rehearses on Monday, but because of the bad weather and I think the power was out, um, uh, they rehearsed yesterday. And it happened that Greg was going down uh, to get some music and lo and behold, there were several inches of water in the basement. And uh, you know, so Greg notified us, called Ronnie, and uh, thanks to Ronnie's quick response and the quick response of Bob Tozier of Tozier Plumbing and Heating, uh, a new sump pump was installed because the sump pump had failed and water was coming up through the hole of the sump pump. So I share all that with you because I really believe that this was a, an example of the presence of God where as difficult as this was and as inconvenient as it was that uh, this, there was water on the basement yesterday were it not for the fact that it was found when it was found, it could have been a whole lot worse. We could have had no heat um, this morning because the water had just about come up to the water of the heating system downstairs and uh, we would have had to all go home. So uh, our thanks to God for being present, our thanks to Ronnie and, and to um, Bob Tozier, and we're just thankful that uh, uh, we're able to be together here this morning to worship God, who is indeed always present with us. Um, I would invite you to fill out the fellowship pads so that we might better respond to the needs of those who are in attendance this morning and so that we might follow up with those who are visiting among us. Our thanks for the altar flowers, uh, which beautify the sanctuary this morning. My thanks as well to the worship team, which coordinates these services, and thanks as well to the musicians who do so much to offer inspiration for our service of worship. Our liturgist this morning is Warren Bailey. You are invited to share in coffee fellowship following today's service of worship. Uh, I would like to remind everyone that there is now a prayer book at the entrance of the church for those who would like to include prayer requests during the joys and concerns. I would ask that one of the ushers bring the prayer book up during the first hymn so that I can share any prayers with the congregation. A few reminders uh, for this coming week. Uh, confirmation will be meeting after worship this morning. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Coffee with Friends will meet at 10 o'clock. Uh, there will be a trustees meeting at 6 o'clock tomorrow night in person uh, here at the church and at 7 o'clock uh, choir rehearsal. Tuesday at 9.30 will be a soups on setup, and Wednesday at 12 noon is soups on and at 7 o'clock is executive council. Um, that being the announcements for this morning, let us pass the peace of God to one another in whatever way you feel comfortable in doing so. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, 
<laughs> but darn close, right? <laughs> well, I, I told the choir coming in that this was the anniversary of my 50th birthday. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> we won't say which anniversary, but <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. And you can uh, guess for yourself uh, which anniversary it is. <laughs> Um, so let us uh, join now in our time for the child in all of us. One day I was having a particularly bad day, and a friend appeared at my office and said, um, how are you doing? I just wanted to stop by and say hello. I said to him, I'm honored, and he said to me, yes, you are. <laughs> and even though it was a bad day, I felt blessed that he came to see me. And that's what I think scripture is saying this morning. That even when, through, even when we are going through hard times, we are blessed because God is with us to support us, to help us, and to give us encouragement. So when Jesus said that we are blessed when we're at the end of our rope, or when we've lost someone or something that is particularly dear to us, or when we are content, or when we long to be right with God, when we are merciful, when we are pure in heart, when we are peacemakers, whether it be good times or hard times, we are blessed because God is always with us to show us that we are not alone. Join me in the responsive uh, call to worship. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the downtrodden and despairing. They will rejoice in God's reign forever. Blessed are those who mourn, who are grieving. They will be comforted in God's reign forever. Blessed are the ones who seek justice and righteousness. They will find it in God's reign forever. Blessed are we when we love our neighbors and seek their needs. We will in God's reign forever. Blessed are we all when we seek to serve others in God's name. Let us worship together, serving one another and serving our mighty God. Amen. Please join in him. Uh, rejoice, keep your heart. Uh, number 113.
you join me in the opening prayer? Loving God, we come this morning seeking to abide in your presence. Open our minds to your spirit of wisdom that we may know how to live as your people. Open our hearts to your spirit of truth that we may love all your people with a love that speaks of justice, kindness, and racial grace. May this time of worship be authentic and pleasing to you. Amen. As we share in our joys and concerns, I would like to once again express my thanks to all those who are calling or keeping in touch in various ways with members and friends of the church family. In our prayer book are the following prayers. Uh, prayer, prayer for peace in Israel, a prayer that the shootings might end, that the shootings might stop, prayers for Alyssa, who fell on the ice during the storm last week, and prayers for Shannon and her vision problems. Um, I would also share with you the prayer request from the chair of our care team, Judy Ryan, who has uh, asked me to share the following prayer request. Uh, Judy writes, to begin with, when many of us said, have a good week, as we left church last Sunday, Little did we know what the weather would turn out to be. No doubt there were many blessings and acts of kindness in our neighborhoods and community. If you were the giver of one of these blessings, God bless you. If you were on the receiving end of an act of kindness, you surely did so with a grateful heart. Thanks and appreciation go out to the first responders, line workers, road crews, and businesses who kept their do doors open to serve our needs. It was a joy last Sunday to officially welcome new members, Reverend Nancy, Sharon, and Betty to our church family. Prayers for all those dealing with COVID and other viruses. Prayerfully, everyone will return to good health in the very near future. Ongoing prayers for Jenny, Lenora and Jack, Sandy, Elizabeth, Christine, Gloria, Mike, Reese, Bill, Gary, Kathy, and Ted. We also ask for prayers for Reverend Peter, Lyra, Lorianne, Susan, Kim, Jackie and Tommy, Pam, Emily, Cindy, Marriott, Marsha and Robert, and Bobby. There are many in our circle of church family and friends who continue to mourn the loss of loved ones. May they know that they are in our prayers. Every thought is a prayer and every one is appreciated. Let us join now for our pastoral prayer. God of love and grace, we give thanks for the ways in which you bless us with your presence in good times and in bad. We are grateful when you share in our joys, as well as when you sustain us through the dark valleys of our lives. Help us to recognize your presence in our midst, so that we might know the joy of your presence no matter what our circumstances might be. God, we pray for our nation as we continue to witness a flurry of mass shootings around the country. Help us to find a solution to this epidemic of violence so that we do not continue to lose innocent lives. May there be peace both within us and between us. As we offer these prayers before you, God, we also pray for those that we name in our joys and concerns. And we pray that you might offer healing, strength, encouragement, and hope to all. And now as we offer these prayers before you, God, let us also join for a moment of silence Remembering those concerns that lie deep within each one of our hearts, let us pray. Mm -hmm. 
As we offer these prayers before, before you, God, let us also pray in the words that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's reading comes from Matthew, book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven for the same way that he persecuted the prophets who were before you. End of innocence. Let us join together for a word of prayer. God, we thank you for the blessing of your presence among us, for the ways that you bless our lives in good times and challenging times. Be with us and to reflect on your blessings and to be grateful in spirit. Pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Just a uh, quick announcement before we continue. Warren reminded me that um, the AED training that we was scheduled for this uh, afternoon at 1 o'clock has been postponed to uh, Sunday, February 12th. Uh, I'm not sure of the time, I take it. I'll find out. Yeah, we'll firm up the time. But just so you know, put on your calendars that the AED training will uh, be on uh, February 12th. And it's timely after um, uh, what happened a few weeks ago on the football field where a player actually, his heart stopped beating. So um, it shows the importance of being able to, to use this effectively. Blessed. It's a word that we use a lot in church. In fact, you even see it printed on clothing where the wearer will display words that proclaim truly blessed. But what does the word actually mean? We often associate being blessed with being happy. In fact, that is often how blessings are experienced. We feel blessed when a long awaited surgery is finally over and everything turns out for the best. We feel blessed by family and friends who surround us with love. We feel blessed by the ways that God provides for our needs. In fact, Dr. Robert Schuller, former senior pastor of what was known as the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California, wrote a book several years ago focusing on the Beatitudes, the scripture that you just heard, and that book was entitled, The Be Happy Attitudes. But as Jesus makes clear in our passage this morning, there are times when we are blessed, when we are not very happy. There is no happiness in poverty or hunger or sorrow or persecution. 
And yet Jesus says that it is at these very moments that we are most deeply blessed. How can that be? We are blessed during difficult times because it is precisely at those times when we are most vulnerable that we experience the blessing of God's presence with us most powerfully. It is at those times when we are at greatest risk, when we are at our weakest, when we are in the most need of help, that we are most aware of the blessing of God's sustaining love. The paradox of life is that when we receive the joyful blessings that God offers to us, loved ones, security, comfort, and the acclaim of others, it is our nature as human beings to feel more and more self-sufficient, self-satisfied, and self-sustaining. And we forget how dependent we are on God. But what happens when things go wrong? When we get the call that a loved one is in the hospital, when a disaster happens at our home, when there is a crisis at work, what is the first thing we do? We go to God in prayer, saying something like, you know, God, I haven't talked with you like this in a long time, but I really need you now. I don't know what to do. All I can do is put my life and my situation in your hands. It is at those times more than any other that we remember what Jesus said. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the hungry, those who mourn, those who are persecuted, for they shall receive the blessing of God's presence in their lives. So God blesses us with God's presence in the living of our lives. But that's not the end of the story. We are called to share those blessings with others. The blessings of God's presence are not something that we hold on to, that we hoard, that we try to keep away from others, but rather God gives us the blessings that we receive so we can share those blessings with others. The wonderful thing is that when blessings are shared, they multiply. Bennett Davis wrote in The Futurist, that the principle of multiplying blessings can even happen in the pragmatic arena of business. After the Malden Mills factory in Lowell burned during the 1995 Christmas season, owner Aaron Furstein continued to pay workers' salaries and benefits until a new plant was built. In the new factory, worker productivity reportedly improved by 25%, and quality defects dropped by two-thirds. Although some of the gains are attributable to new equipment, Firstine believes that the improvements were a direct result of the goodwill of our people. Along the same lines, many of us do our grocery shopping up at Market Basket in Biddeford. How many of you go up to Biddeford to Market Basket? I know we do. Uh, and I guess there may be Market Baskets elsewhere, maybe in uh, Newington, New Hampshire. But we, we go to Market Basket in part because the prices are so good. But I think there's also a sense in which we go to Market Basket because they have such a good reputation in the way that they treat their employees. Indeed, our niece works at Market Basket and has confirmed the fact that she feels that, that uh, the management treats the employees fairly and respectfully. And so that reputation is something that's known far and wide. And it's an example, I think, of the way in which uh, blessings are multiplied as we share those blessings with others. One other thought about blessings, they are a gift of grace. Blessings are freely given, unconditional, undeserved gifts from a loving God. There is nothing that we can do to earn blessings. They are given to us freely by an ever-present God who rejoices with us in times of joy and walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. The challenge for us to, is to be equally grateful for those blessings, both during the good times as well as during the times of tribulation. 
Reverend Dr. M. Craig Barnes, former president of Princeton Theological Seminary, reinforced the importance of having an attitude of gratitude in good times as well as in bad. He writes, I doubt that there is such a thing as a measure of spirituality, but if there is, gratitude would be it. Only the grateful are paying attention. They are grateful because they pay attention, and they pay attention because they are grateful. They pay attention to the grace that a loving God offers to each and every one of us, a grace that serves as a source of the blessings that we, see, we receive from God. Speaking of Dr. Barnes, he offers a short and simple summary of the meaning of blessings for our lives. He says that blessings are a glimpse of the bliss of heaven. When we experience the bliss of God's presence in our midst, no matter what the circumstances might be, whether times of joy or times of sorrow, when God is with us, we experience a peace that passes all understanding. Let us join now for our offertory hymn number 591, Where Cross the Crowded Ways of Life. And now as we give thanks for the blessings that we receive from God, both in good times and in bad, let us express our thanksgiving through our morning offerings.
Let us join together in prayer. Liberator Christ, you went to the top of a mountain and taught a sacred word about the meek and the grief-stricken, about the lost and the lonely. Come to this place now, and by these gifts, help us to see the world not as it is, but as it could be, that we may become good news to all. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 544, The Church's One Foundation. And now, as you have learned wisdom, go and teach. As you have been fed, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go to set free the imprisoned. As you have heard, proclaim. And the blessing which you have received from the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen. <laughs>